Hello, and welcome to another RX3 webinar. My name is Jonathan Scott. I am a senior scientist nutritionist for the Consortium for Health and Military Performance at the Uniformed Services University. I have no relevant conflicts of interest to disclose. Today's talk will be focusing on dietary supplements. And we really want to focus on the main five W's of dietary supplements, which include what are they? Who uses them? Why should I be concerned? When are they necessary? And where can I find reliable information? We will also discuss how to evaluate dietary supplements as well as adverse event reporting. To begin with, I'd like to start off with a case. I will give you a couple seconds here to read through the case and to understand the basic premise of it. Essentially, we have a junior enlisted service member who was transferred to the emergency department after passing up while standing in line. The patient had noted using a performance-enhancing sports nutrition supplement and energy drinks in the past 24 hours. And although a medical diagnosis of exhaustion was determined as the underlying cause of this service member's episode of syncope, an adverse event should still be documented. We will talk about later in the presentation of where and how to do that. To begin with, dietary supplements, what are they? Well, they were defined by law in 1994 as part of the Dietary Supplements Health and Education Act, also known as DSHEA. We'll not read the entire definition to you, but essentially it is a product other than tobacco that's intended to supplement the diet. And that's really key that it's supposed to supplement the diet, not replace components of the diet. They can come in several different forms, and they may be taken. They must be taken orally. So, for example, we know that dietary supplements come in various pills, powders, bars, gums, chews. They may be single multivitamins. They may be single minerals. They may be pre-workout powders, they may be protein powders, they may be herbs, botanicals, they come in several different forms. And most recent estimates from 2004 are that somewhere between 75,000 and 85,000 dietary supplements are available in the U.S., accounting for nearly $37 billion in sales. So who exactly is using dietary supplements? From a general population standpoint, Approximately two-thirds of all U.S. adults report taking at least one dietary supplement a day. This is according to data from the Council for Responsible Nutrition. You can see women, on average, are using dietary supplements at slightly higher rates compared to men. We can also see that as individuals age, they report using more dietary supplements. So how does the general population compare to the military? In fact, the numbers are very similar. According to the 2011 Health-Related Behavior Survey of active duty service members, approximately 65 to 68% of all active duty service members report using a dietary supplement, with the Marine Corps having the highest rate of use. So why should I be concerned with dietary supplements? We have four main reasons that we're going to discuss. The first reason why you should be concerned is that dietary supplements do not require pre-market approval. What is pre-market approval? Pre-market approval means that a product has demonstrated safety before it can be sold. This applies to food additives, drugs, biologics, and other medical devices. This, however, is not true of dietary supplements. Dietary supplements do not require pre-market approval or demonstration of safety before they are sold. Second, lack of research. Many dietary supplements do not contain research to substantiate or validate their claims. Because pre-market approval is not required for dietary supplements, a lack of research tends to follow. Third, the number of tainted supplements on the market. Since 2007, the FDA has posted more than 600 warnings of tainted supplements. Important to note that most fall within one of four categories of dietary supplements marketed for bodybuilding, 
weight loss, sexual enhancement, and or diabetes. Lastly, approximately 60 to 70 percent of military physicians report encountering an adverse event during a patient encounter. However, only 10 to 20 percent of physicians actually report the adverse event. We will discuss later the importance of reporting adverse events. So why should you be concerned with dietary supplements? While we already mentioned four reasons, we're also going to explore the red flags. What should tip you off when looking at a dietary supplement? As discussed previously, dietary supplements marketed for bodybuilding, weight loss, performance enhancement, diabetes, and sexual enhancement have a greater likelihood of being tainted or adulterated with ingredients versus, say, a multivitamin or mineral supplement. Another red flag is when a dietary supplement claims to cure a wide range of unrelated diseases. And of course, the promise of a quick fix. Lose 10 pounds in one day. The 48-hour cookie diet. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Also, when dietary supplements lack third-party verification, this should also be a red flag. We'll talk about third-party verification in the following slides. Products touted as all, an all-natural alternative should be a red flag. And any dietary supplement that has a label warning stating that it may cause a positive result on a drug test. I want to read to you now a warning from a popular multivitamin pack. Warning. This product is not for use by any individual under the age of 18. Please consult with a physician before using this product. Do not take this product if you have or are at risk for any medical condition or disease including, but not limited to, diabetes, asthma, depression, recurrent headaches, glaucoma, difficulty urinating, prostate enlargement, seizure disorder, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, arthritis, heart disease, stroke, are pregnant, or are suffering from any inflammatory diseases. Be sure to talk to your physician before using this product if you are using any prescription drug, over-the-counter medication, or supplements. Immediately discontinue use and consult your physician if dizziness, sleepiness, tremors, nervousness, agitation, headache, heart palpitations, or any side effects occur. Discontinue use two weeks prior to surgery. The use of this product may be banned by some athletic associations. Athletes should consult with their sanctioning authority before use. California Residents Proposition 65 Warning This product contains a substance known to the state of California to cause birth defects or other reproductive harm. Do not exceed the recommended dose. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. This product is manufactured in a GMP facility that uses soy, milk, eggs, peanuts, tree nuts, fish, shellfish, and wheat. Wow, that was a mouthful. That was the warning label on a popular multivitamin pack. Big red flag. So when are dietary supplements necessary? Dietary supplements may be necessary under three conditions. First, when a medical test confirms a deficiency, such as a vitamin D deficiency or an iron deficiency. During times in our life when we have increased vitamin mineral requirements, such as during pregnancy, when women have an increased folic acid requirements. Third, when we're consuming less than 1,500 calories per day, it's very challenging to consume all of the vitamins and minerals our body requires when eating less than 1,500 calories per day. If not one of these three conditions, dietary supplements are really never necessary unless directed by your healthcare provider. Remember, these are supplements and not substitutes. Taking a supplement is not a substitute for poor eating choices or behaviors. All right, so 
Where can I find reliable information on dietary supplements? We have four resources for you. First, Operation Supplement Safety, or OPS. The Natural Medicines Comprehensive Database, also known as NMCD. The Food and Drug Administration, as they in fact have the oversight on dietary supplements. Last but not least, the Office of Dietary Supplements through the National Institutes of Health. Let's take a closer look at Operation Supplement Safety. To begin, what you see in front of you is the landing page or the home page for the Human Performance Resource Center. The URL is listed up top. On the home page, in the top right hand corner, you see the Operation Supplement Safety button. When we click on it, we're taken to the Operation Supplement Safety or the Ops home page. I want to point out a few key features here. The first is the section called For the Providers. In this section, we provide brochures, handouts, presentation, videos, links to adverse event reporting, and a link to the Natural Medicines app. We have a similar section for the warfighters where the very similar content or information is used. The information has just been scaled back. Next, we have the high risk list. The purpose of the high risk list is to provide information about relative risk of selected products marketed as dietary supplements that pose an increased risk of containing stimulants, steroids, or other hormone-like substances, including unapproved drugs or other potentially harmful substances. Unless specifically noted, this list does not claim these products actually contain any particular substances. The information on the sh site should only be considered in combination with all other educational materials on ops so that service members can learn to identify potential health risks associated with dietary supplements. Last, we have the Ask the Expert button. This provides a way to directly ask a question to a subject matter expert. Answers are evidence-based and reflect the current state of the science. So, how can I evaluate dietary supplements? We have three different ways of evaluating dietary supplements. The first is the OPS scorecard. Second is third-party verification. And third is the Natural Medicines Comprehensive Database, Natural Medicines Brand Evidence-Based Rating. Let's take a look at each one of these three ways of evaluating dietary supplements. First, the OPS scorecard. The OPS scorecard will be found under the For the Provider section as well as for the Warfighter section on the OPS homepage. What we see in front of us is a scorecard which provides seven questions that we answer either yes or no. We score an answer of one as yes and zero for no. We go through and answer the seven questions regarding our supplement of interest. And if our total score adds up to four or more, the supplement is likely okay. If the score adds up to less than four, the supplement is a no-go. Next, third-party verification. Third-party verification independently verifies the use of high-quality ingredients, that the ingredients listed on the label, both the type and amount, are actually found in the bottle, and no undeclared ingredients are in the bottle as well. It's important to note that third-party verification does not ensure effectiveness. It does not tell us that the product actually works, but rather third-party certification tells us that what the label claims is in the bottle is in the bottle and in the amounts claimed. Across the bottom, we can see examples of five different third-party verification programs, which include the Banned Substance Control Group, Consumer Labs, Informed Choice, the NSF, and USP. Each one of these companies has a website which lists which products, which supplements, have been tested and passed their screening process. Lastly, we have the Natural Medicines Comprehensive Database Natural Medicines Brand Rating System. This is a single rating on a scale of 1 to 10 that combines safety, effectiveness, and product quality into a single score. Currently, there are greater than 91,000 commercially available products 
in the database. If products are scored on a scale of 1 to 10, with 1 being the lowest rating and 10 being the highest rating, we only recommend supplements that score at least an 8. So let's take a look at how exactly we would access the Natural Medicine's comprehensive database. We're back again on the Human Performance Resource Center homepage. Just down from the Ops button, we find a link to the Natural Medicine's comprehensive database. When we click on this, we're taken to this landing page. On this page, we have two different boxes highlighted. The first is the DOD Healthcare Professionals access to the Natural Medicine's comprehensive database. Note that Natural Medicine's is free for DOD healthcare professionals and service members. All you need is your .mil email address to sign up. Below that, we can see the access to the NMCD mobile app. The NMCD mobile app is also free for both service members and providers with a .mil email address. Note that the app is the consumer version of the Natural Medicine's comprehensive database, which is what we find up above on the Warfighter link. Let's take a closer look, though, at the DOD Healthcare Professionals version of Natural Medicines. So when we click on this, we're taken to the Natural Medicines Comprehensive Database landing page. We select Browse and Commercial Products. In this case, I had selected commercial products that begin with the letter B and selected B100 by Safeway. When we click on that, we now see the Natural Medicines brand evidence rating. In this case, the B100 supplement scores an 8. What's also important to note is that we can also find information about effectiveness, safety, and interactions with drugs with this supplement by simply clicking on the View button and expanding each one of those tabs out. Talking to your patients about dietary supplements should be incorporated into every patient encounter. So how do we begin that conversation? Well, start, just start asking general questions. Are you taking any supplements to improve general health, lose weight, increase muscle mass, boost energy, enhance sexual activity? These can be some leading questions that may get the patient thinking about what supplements they may be taking or why they may be taking their supplements. Further asking about all the various forms of supplements is important. Remember, they must be taken by mouth, so they may come in the form of pills, shakes, bars, extracts, chews, gums, etc. Continuing down, once you've identified that the patient is in fact taking a dietary supplement or multiple dietary supplements, you'll ask about dosage. How much? Frequency? How often? It's important to ask if the patient stacks or combines supplements to enhance desired results. Don't forget to leave out any herbal teas or, or botanicals. These are in fact dietary supplements as well and has the potential to interact with other supplements or drugs the individual may be taking. It's important to do a complete thorough history on dietary supplement use after each patient encounter. It is important to complete a dietary supplement history during each patient encounter. You also want to ask questions about where do you buy your supplement? Do you buy it on base? Do you buy it at the exchange? Do you buy it online? Lastly, asking about adverse events or adverse reactions. It's important that you as the provider are able to be able to recognize what adverse events or reactions are. Adverse events may include headaches, increased blood pressure, increased heart rate, anxiety, difficulty sleeping. It's important to be able to identify any adverse event or adverse reaction as you're going through your patient history and document that. Make note of which supplement or supplements are causing these reactions. Once you do that, it's important to report adverse events. And we do that by going to the Ops homepage and at the very bottom of the screen, we have a link to Report Adverse Events. We click on that button. We're taken back to the Natural Medicines Comprehensive Database. What's nice about that is by accessing the link from the Ops homepage, you do not need to sign in. 
it'll take you directly to natural medicines. We find in 13 very simple, easy questions to answer. We just need to make sure we click the permission button and click to submit. Now why is it so important that we report adverse events? Reporting adverse events is how we build a case to have supplements removed from the market. Remember, supplements do not require pre-market approval before they are sold. So supplements are sold without being tested for safety. When supplements are found not to be safe or to produce adverse events, once a number of adverse events are reported over a given period of time, the FDA will take steps then to remove those supplements from the market. So it's your job as a provider to be very diligent about completing a dietary supplement's history during each patient encounter and reporting any adverse events to dietary supplements that are noted during your patient encounter. We'll finish up with another case, this time a 35-year-old field grade officer. Otherwise healthy, consumed what seemed to be a harmless nitric oxide booster before his workout. He again started feeling lightheaded and dizzy after completing a set of bench presses. This should be a big red flag to us. We don't normally feel dizzy after completing a set of bench presses. That being said, an adverse event still must be documented. Remember, this helps to build a case for removal of potentially harmful supplements. In summary, remember, utilize OPS. Operation Supplement Safety is the Department of Defense go-to resource on supplements. Always engage patients about their usage. And lastly, report an adverse event. And remember, if you have specific questions that are not available on the Operation Supplement Safety website, be sure to use the Ask the Expert button. We look forward to hearing from you.